The Dallas Cowboys present These Boots Are Made for Talking, the official podcast of the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders. Now, your hosts, Courtney McKenna and Shannon Gross. Oh, 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 wait, oh, here cut, stop right there. Stop, stop. cut, <laughs> wrong. Today, that is wrong. <laughs> Because sitting in, as I said before we went live, the ghost seat, it's a combination of guest and host. Mm-hmm. Yes. We have the one and only Kelly Finglass in the house. Woo-hoo. Yes, I'm, Kelly. I'm Hi, so excited. Courtney. Hello, Kelly. So I'm ex- sorry I'm not Shannon today, but maybe maybe we'll have fun today. It's all right. I'm happy about it. <laughs> and sitting in our host, no, not host, I can't get over the ghost thing, (laughs) guest seats, we have the lovely Lexi and Madeline joining us. Actually, fun, because the last time either of you guys were on, it was together as well. So we got a nice duo, and it's a fun duo, and we'll get into that later. Take two. But this is a really exciting show, because it's been about a week. Maybe. Not even a week since you've been back. Correct. Less than a week, and around a week since... We have been back from the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders calendar shoot in Cancun, Mexico at Dreams Playa Mujeres, and we are here to break it all down for you, and we are talking like this could literally be three hours long, Mm -hmm. the show. We're so excited. So many memories, a lot of fun things to talk about. I'm I'm ready to dive on in. Let's dive. Let's dive. Let's Let's not stay in the shallow. Shallow, shallow, (laughs) shallow. (laughs) So, first, to start, we took off from DFW to Cancun. We took off on May 20th, but you were there when? I got there on the 17th. We spent three days working with the hotel property and arranging all the logistics and um, all the details for 54 people that were checking in. And then when you guys arrived, we hit the ground running with the shooting the next day. Yeah, there was no time for breathing, Mm -hmm. no time for anything. But you did do some scouting beforehand, too, with the photographers. So how does that work for everybody? During the scout trip, there's two things going on. One is me meeting with the hotel. And in this case, it was Dreams, Playa Mahara's. And we're arranging all of the rooms, all the roommates, um, the area of the hotel that we're in, all the meals, um, medical help if needed, um, security, all of those logistics. I felt like a corporate meeting planner on that part. And then additionally, the fun part of a scout trip is going out to all the areas. So we scouted Tulum, we scouted Puerto Morelos, we scouted um, Isla Blanca. It, and that is just a discovery process. That's an adventure for me. It's so much fun because you get to just discover things. You photograph them. The guys are the photographers, Jeremy, Jeremiah, and Michael are um, literally uh, mapping out the sunshine, sunrises, sunsets. They're all, we we land at a place. In fact, one one place in particular, we drove by and saw this very brightly colored house, and it had murals painted on it, much like graffiti, and we just all of a sudden started calling it the Bumblebee House. And now that I'm bilingual, it's Casa (laughs) Bumblebee. Um, and so we said, stop. And so we went into that house and they all just scattered and found probably 50 different shots in one area through their three different lenses. And that's the fun part is the discovery and the planning for before the ladies arrive. It's really cool. Did both of you shoot at Bumblebee? I did. I did not. I did not. It's, it's really interesting. You, f- you roll up at the photographers. I, my brain clearly doesn't work that way. I always think I've got like an amazing shot and then I take it. and I'm like, mm, okay. But you show up and it's like a house, but all these beautiful, beautiful pictures come out of it that you just mm-hmm. would have never expected. It's just these hidden treasures that we find, and that's that's part of it. They're pre-planning the composition of the photos. There's so much that goes into the actual uh, final images that get published, which, P.S., we came home with 56,000 images. Wow. Woo-hoo. How many was last year? Do you remember? I think we were in the 40s. Stepping Um, it up. Digital photography is brilliant, and it's my biggest curse, too, because when I hear those photographers lay down that show, I'm just like, oh, gosh, it's hard to edit. But sometimes the in-between where they're going from hand up to hand down, you get a beautiful shot. Oh, for sure. So trigger happy sometimes is a good thing. But I wouldn't want to be in your shoes trying to sift through 56,000 photos. That's a lot. A lot, a lot. Well, first... Well, not even first, because we've already gotten started. Let's talk about where we stayed, because it was absolutely beautiful. It we was. stayed at Dreams Pie Mujeres. It was in Cancun, Mexico, north of the airport by what, like 
30? Probably 30 minutes. minutes. It was north of Playa. Um, it was almost at the farthest most area that is La Blanca area that we photographed. So it's, it's about 30 minutes from the airport. And it was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. The property was huge. So many pools. Yeah, we took golf carts everywhere because it was so big. I was really excited whenever I found out that we were going there because I'd actually been in 2017 with my mom. And so I had a little idea of what it was going to be like. I was the tour guide at the beginning of the trip, <laughs> showed the girls around the water slide, all the fun stuff. So I was really excited to find out that we were going back. The water slide. I was going to say, if I'd known all they wanted was a water slide, which was the hit of the entire trip, we could have just gone to Arlington. Exactly. To, to water Harvard. park and call of the day. <laughs> what is that? Hurricane Harvard? Hurricane Harvard. Harvard. The water slide was the highlight for it sure. It was fun. I I did go down a couple times. I'm not going to lie. It was a lot of fun. It is Was fun. the hype like as awesome as the actual going down of the slide? I think yes. So. <laughs> I guess from being from Florida, I've been to a water park a few times in my day, so it really brought me back. But yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And the Lazy River. We did a mm -hmm. fun video shoot on the property with uh, one of our videographers, Ted, and a bunch of the girls. Oh, it's actually playing right now. Oh. Where yep. we went down the water slides and we're having fun in the Lazy River. And it, it was a blast. It's a really cool opportunity to have something like that. And then for you guys to be able to take advantage of it on your days off was yeah. really cool. And there was one slide that was open and then one that was a total capsule. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I the mom it. in me was, I was having mom anxiety. If I'd had my children when they were children, <laughs> they would have had a ball there. I mean, it was such a beautiful property and the family, the beautiful restaurants and you don't have to make reservations and you don't have to wear wristbands mm -hmm. and all the things that you do at all-inclusive hotels. This one's called Unlimited Luxuries. Unlimited. And here's this water park in the middle of the resort, plus fabulous steak houses and sushi yeah. restaurants and hibachi mm -hmm. grill. And, and then casual, you can go in. Some of them you could go in and your cover up. It, it was so family friendly. And that's what mm -hmm. makes it easy for our group. Traveling with 54 people it's is not an yeah. easy task. No. Yeah. But some of the fun things that, so on your guys' days off when you weren't shooting, mm -hmm. you had some appearances mm -hmm. and some team dinners together. Right. Mm -hmm. What were your favorite days off and what did you get to do around the property on your days off that you loved? There were a lot of really good dinners. There was one place that, like, so if you went to dinner, a lot of the time they would bring out, like, their favorite dish to serve you. So there was one night and we went to, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I have it written down somewhere, but um, they served salmon pizza, which in my head, I'm like salmon on pizza. That's kind of crazy. But it was so, so good because they like the salmon was great. But then even the bread on the pizza was just like so yummy. So it was like really cool because I would have never ordered that myself. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, them bringing it out to you and them being like, this is our favorite to serve you. And you're just like, OK, you just fully embrace the experience. And I really enjoyed that for sure. Yeah, we. We definitely had time off to relax, but we had so many fun activities, mm -hmm. um, so many opportunities to do different things. We had a draft party by the pool, which was really great because we got to meet all the guests at the hotels, people from all over, from Canada, from all over the U.S. So that was really fun, too. And they were excited to meet us. We were in our uniforms. So we got to sign some pictures. Um, it was cool. I was there and a bunch of Cowboys fans actually yeah. came yeah. through. Mm -hmm. right. Cowboys gear was cool. There was it a lot was of really people cool. from like all over the world, like Canada and like England I met. Mm -hmm. And so it was just really cool because everybody's coming from such a different part and they're still so excited to see us or, you know, be a part of the Cowboys organization, which is just really cool. It was really fun. And it then there was cool. the spontaneous performance that I had him do yes. on the bridge. No, yes. I'm so <laughs> glad you made us do that, though, because I haven't, like, danced in the, the uniform since football season. It felt so funny. good. Oh, it felt good. Yeah, felt it right. felt good. I, I was like, oh, I missed this. You. Of yeah. course it did. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> To, to set the stage, there's like this big bridge platform thing above one of the pools, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. and this is where the girls performed. I had, <laughs> they were not scheduled to perform, they yeah. were not rehearsed to perform, they were not blocked to perform, they were set to sign autographs, yes. take pictures. I'm and pretty sure I had an I heard, umbrella at one point. All I heard afterwards was Kelly was like, "Do some tags, <laughs> do some tags." <laughs> do some tags. <laughs> I was inspired by "Don't Stop Me" by uh -huh. yes. one legendary queen. One legendary queen. Can I also talk about at the rap party? <laughs> when Don't Stop Me Now came on. I've seen a performance by Kelly like I've never seen before. <laughs> that, that was, that was, was amazing. amazing. Oh, gosh. That was great. 
I love that. that I, I, awesome. I go into a different part of myself <laughs> when Queen yeah. comes on. She was like, oh. it. she had sandals on, so the dancing was easy. You know, mm-hmm. if it was in heels, it might have been a little more difficult. Oh, come on. I think you the brought Jeremy into it, too, incredible. at one point. It was so great. Yeah. She, Don't stop me. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good party starter. It is. Yeah. It's fun. Rap party was a lot of fun, and Kelly was... Uh, also, another thing she found out during Scout was a silent disco, yes. which was then brought into the rap party, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> that Those are the kinds of things that we also work through on the Scout, is honestly trying to plan these activities. And we went one evening, and they said, there's a silent disco, and I'd never heard of that term. And so we walked up to this area, and all the hotel guests had headphones on, much like we do. And they were kind of jamming by themselves, but with a group. But there was no music. You couldn't hear anything. You could hear some little whispers of them singing something but as it turns out every person's headphone had three choices red blue or green which were synced with three different live djs three different genres of music very different and um, i could tell at one point they were all singing bon jovi it was very evident that they were all chanting bon jovi but then when i put on the headsets i wasn't on the bon jovi channel and i got sweet caroline and i'm like come on but i quickly switched and found abba dancing queen Dancing Queen. It, was it fun. is the, really one of the coolest party tricks I've seen in a while. It, it was, was really fun. fun. Rap party was fun in general too. Uh huh. We had a nice rap party on the resort property. Mm-hmm. All the girls and Kelly and Judy, photographers, hair, makeup crew were there, and it's a great celebration to the culmination yeah. of the week. Definitely and you've just made it sound way. like all we do is go down slides and eat <laughs> and party, and that's <laughs> there's a there's a lot in between. No, but that, that's a. I mean, when we were at dinner, I had dinner with Shelly McCaslin and, um, you know, because we she was our, you know, guide to to dinner. And she was saying that you and um, her were working really hard to, like, make rap party something really special. Yeah. So then in my head, the whole time I was like, well, what's it going to be like? How is it going to be special? You know, like I have a feeling they're just going to have, you know, cheers and like here are some photos and that's it. But then when you came out with the headphones, I was like, that's it. That's the something special. It was really, really fun. It was really fun. It was the perfect way to end the whole trip. Mm -hmm. They had a little slideshow going of um, all of each girl had one photo. So that was really cool to see the hard work that we had put in all week. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we're all on different shoot days. So being able to see girls that I didn't shoot with and what they had been doing was really cool too. Right. One other beautiful thing about the resorts were the rooms we stayed in. They were Mm -hmm. amazing. I had a beach view. I don't know if you guys had a beach view. Did I you? I had a jungle view. Jungle yeah, mine view. was jungly. Mm-hmm. Jungle. What was yours? <laughs> mine was beach view. Partial, partial ocean view. Partial ocean more, view. More, more ocean than partial. Nice. But yeah. they were, the rooms were so beautiful, mm-hmm. and the views were amazing. But probably mm-hmm. what was even better and more exciting for you guys were your roommates. So who were, yeah. who were you with the whole entire trip? I was with Bridget. That's definitely a really exciting thing too, is finding out who your roommates are. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, I've. I've gotten to know Bridget well over this last year, but I really feel like we grew even closer this trip, which was really special. She was very down to earth and um, just laid back, which made it super fun. And uh, we got some, I got some matching PJs for us. And then she got us a little, she got me a little Easter basket. So we, we bonded quickly and um, it was, it was really fun. I was excited to be with Bridget And, and the rooms were amazing. I mean, they, turned down our beds for us every night. They had little chocolates on our pillows and they were there, you know, within two seconds if we needed anything. And they were super accommodating, which was really nice. I made the bad decision of like holding off on eating the chocolates until the second to last (laughs) night. And I ate one because I wanted something sweet. And I was like, oh my God, these are so good. Why didn't I eat them? That's all I needed to say. (laughs) Two chocolates on the They were so good. Yeah. 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 Did y'all notice, I was excited about the full size toiletries, the shampoo. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. I thought that was cool. Uh Better than the little one. They were, they were amazing. They were the same people every day. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren was my roommate. And I kind of the same thing as Lexi, like I had known Lauren and love Lauren and have been a teammate with her for this past year. But you get to know everybody in a little bit different of a way when you get to share a room with them for 10 days. Uh So and one of the greatest things about this team or your teammates is that you get to um, get inspired by them always. And Lauren is just so hardworking. And she was just she would be working all day long and helping other people and coming back with all these really great stories of how great everybody did. And it just made me going through it my first time feel like really comfortable. And cause she has been an eye for, you know, basically everybody in every single role. So for her to be like, you're doing great. 
it gave me a lot of confidence too. She was awesome, like yeah. so inspired just by who she is. So it was great. She was great. I got to work with Lauren a lot during during the shoot mm-hmm. on Jeremiah's crew. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. She was our team nurse as well, and that always. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs some TLC mm-hmm. at some time on a trip. Definitely. Team nurse. She, she team did nurse. come through. We had some people dropping like flies. Well, now that's not <laughs> terrific. <laughs> None of the cheerleaders. A couple slow mornings. It was more, it was more the crew. That's yeah. true. The cheerleaders were the picture I know. of hell. That's true. It was us. Knock on surface. This, this part is wood, I would say. Feels like but wood. We, we, no one got sick, which was awesome as well. Mm-hmm. Have there been casualties? Not like actual casualties in the past, but no, not real casualties. But sick. sometimes when people travel in general, yeah. you know, they might have upset stomach type symptoms. I think I'm the only real casualty, which was losing my toenail. <laughs> oh, and I, that was due to the lightning strike. <laughs> or okay, so I'm saying hit us with the lightning strike story, <laughs> and then we might have to go to break because let me just tee this up. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly is there. Yes, a few days before everybody else, we land at the airport and. Our lovely friends at Amstar, who are the best, took us all around the city. They were picking us up to bring us to the resort. And one of the Amstar staff came up, and I was sitting next to Judy. And then Michael V., who is one of the um, editors for the calendar, he he came up and was telling us, you know, Kelly got struck by lightning. (laughs) And and we're like, "Mm." I know Kelly very well, and I know there's going to be some deviation in that story story where Kelly, did she actually get struck by lightning? So hit us with the story, because I was like, there's no way. I was very close. That was the closest to lightning I've ever seen in my life. We were sitting at a poolside cabana restaurant, me and Cable, our um, head of security for this project, and then Matthew, the head of the hotel property. We were all sitting and having a meeting, and it was a beautiful day, and Shelly McCaslin, who was going to test another story, which was our sun ceremony that we wanted to test for you guys on the beach. That'll be a little teaser for later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sun ceremony, Shelly went out to the beach and did the sun ceremony with the shaman, who was a Mayan religious leader who teaches you how to welcome the sun each day. Shelly went and welcomed the sun. Meanwhile, we're sitting up at lunch, and out of nowhere, these clouds and storms came in like something I've never seen, and the rain... just just pummeled everybody everybody from the pool started screaming and running into the little huts just because it was such heavy downpour of rain then lightning then thunder and i mean it was loud really loud and i was like y'all should we be concerned i mean we're under this little thatched gilligan island hut (laughs) so we sat there and they're no they're fine and they're all acting all cool and then out of nowhere lightning strikes literally it really was the closest we all all three of us admit it was the closest we'd ever been to and when you when i saw it it like went from the ground up it was that bright and maybe that's the way lightning appears when you're that close but it went and it went up and i screamed a good old big big Texas girl scream and everybody in the restaurant looked at me, but everybody was scared. Then we didn't know not if we should take cover or not. Then I noticed people popping out with their video phones and I was like, Oh my goodness, did somebody get hit? Cause it was right around the corner. And I noticed people started filming. Fortunately they hadn't. Um, but a tree, a palm tree had quote exploded. <laughs> Ex- I've forgotten how Spanish, how you say expand, explode in Spanish. We'll find out from Surrey, <laughs> but it had exploded. And the, and it went poof and the palm tree branches had just disintegrated and were falling off and then the security comes in and then they're sweeping up like four bags full of palm Palm branches so there was lightning and there was a casualty in the palm tree but it was not and i was very (laughs) very very close and then the next day i crossed my legs under a table and i hit my toe incorrectly and it did pop three quarters of my toenail off. So my story is I got struck by lightning and lost a toenail. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So So now I got off the bus and she was like, it's been great. We got struck by lightning and I lost a toenail, but it's great. And I was just like, (laughs) did you get hit on your toe with the lightning? I'm like, what happened? I was sitting there and I was like, I can't wait to hear the story. <laughs> there's always a story. It doesn't ask matter cable, if a day ask cable. He's my witness. It was it was dramatic. In fact, there was also a tornado that somebody had filmed or a wind tunnel over the water because and they showed it to me at the same time. There was a wind tunnel and you could see debris going through it. Okay. But then that that happened. It was three minutes and gone. And then for the rest of the trip, everything was just brilliantly 
sunny. In fact, that's one of the only mm-hmm. trips we've ever had where we really didn't get rained on. We got in a session. so yeah, lucky because compared did. to last year where it was like mm-hmm. totally rained out. Yeah. I think it rained while we were there during the night mm-hmm. once. It was yeah, awesome. During one of my shoot days, it was supposed to be bad weather. So we were you know, planning on going somewhere and then we decided to just stay at the resort in case the weather got bad. And then it ended up being beautiful the whole day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, we did really luck out with that. We did. Lucked out big time. Mm-hmm. Well, we are just scratching the surface, yes. everyone. When we come back to these boots, we're made for talk, and we are going to dive into everything, anything, and everything, and all things DCC Swim 19 Woo-hoo. when we come back. What do you call a truly great beer that's brewed with more taste, only 96 calories, and 3.2 carbs? We call it Miller Lite. What are you holding? Miller Lite. Hold true. Great beer, great responsibility. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Average analysis, 12 fluid ounces, less than one gram protein, and zero grams fat. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus. A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store and learn how to buy one smartphone and get a second one on us. Based on GWS One Score, September 2018. It can be hard to find the right resource for learning about important financial matters. You search how to build savings, you end up reading about the one weird ingredient from supermarkets that can make you taller. That's why Bank of America built BetterMoneyHabits.com, a safe little corner of the internet for answering your financial questions. Full of simple videos and tips, Better Money Habits can show you how to make the most of your money without resorting to random searches that always seem to lead to unbelievable photos of childhood stars grown up. To learn more, visit BetterMoneyHabits.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Back to These Boots Are Made For Talking. Oh, there here we go. go. I was like, are we back on? I can't hear myself. Well, we totally even missed the the music to come back into the show because we were literally reliving stories yes. <laughs> from calendar. We could sit here gabbing all day. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to talk about what we were just talking about? Yeah. yeah. It was another one of the amazing things that Dreams had to offer, but it was something like I've literally <laughs> never seen before. Yeah. So we were just talking about this Tesma call ceremony. And the first part, you're out on the beach and they go around with this shell and this smoke and they go up your body and we welcome the sun from all these different areas. And then the second part was, and it was only for our team, I think, that we went to this other part and you go into like this little hut and then they close a brick yeah it's a little brick (laughs) oven and there's this little spot in the center for like these really hot stones and then you you know everybody goes in and you can only be on your knees like that's as high as it goes up and then you sit around this like little fireplace of stones and then they close this blanket so you're everybody's involved in this like little pizza oven hut (laughs) and then they bring in these hot stones and um like a thing of water Mm -hmm. and you go through this whole ceremony of um I don't even there were like four different doors so it was Mm -hmm. like welcoming cleansing and um what else was there there were four different steps but mostly just like yeah like you said welcoming and cleansing and we did a lot of was it supposed to be cleansing your mind yes, for that yes. day? And picturing, oh yeah, know. picturing something on a mountain, like this beautiful, you know, clear vision of clarity and... Restoring your mind mm-hmm. and yeah, my skin felt great afterwards. No, yeah, but it was, it was very, very hot and it was a really long time too. And we had, I think, like 15 or so girls <laughs> in this little pizza hut thing <laughs> and um, they would pour 
the water on the hot stones and we would have to go around and say like a little chant and then our name and so it got really really steamy and it was so dark in there that you couldn't see anybody or you know like I would touch Miranda who was like sitting next to me just so I knew she was like still there but <laughs> it's a really tight little space and very dark and hot and so it but it was really cool if you just allow yourself to and mm -hmm. like embrace that and then I really enjoy stuff like that. So I got a really good sweat out of it. I had mascara all the way down my face, <laughs> but it was really, really cool. And then I felt very cleansed after you sweat everything out and you also, you know, have that like yoga mindset mm -hmm. of clearing everything out. And yeah. it, it was being led by the, the, the Mayan religious mm -hmm. leader called a shaman, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the translator he, too. Oh, that's yeah. right. She was mm -hmm. translating. I, I, I loved the part on the beach. He had yeah. his face north. Well, first of all, it was high noon, so it was, you know, the sun's highest point, and we faced north and south and east and west and raised our arms up, and he was saying things, and it, I don't know, it kind of made you connect with your environment. Mm -hmm. sun. But then when he had us go on our knees and he said, touch touch the Mother Earth and thank God for this day, mm -hmm. and I was like, when you did it, you really did get caught up yeah. in the moment. It really was like a moment to press pause on all the chaos in your life and thank God for this day. That part I liked. Yeah. I did not go in the, the oven. <laughs> <laughs> but the video of you guys coming out yeah. and they were like just drooling. It was a cool team bonding experience yes. too because when we all came out, we were like, we did it. Because yes. you just, you didn't know how long it was going to last and there were four doors and that's what they kept saying. Like there are four doors and so yeah. we got to door three and then girls who were like really, you know, starting to, lose it or wanting to get out they were like no I can do it like we're gonna push through and so the last one we were like we got it you guys and so when we all came out it was a really you know team bonding experience if like you we can made make it, it through, through the training camp <laughs> yes. you can make it through right. the test exactly. <laughs> no kidding yeah exactly it was fun it was, was cool. fun mm -hmm. well let's talk about the shoot experience how did it go you both you both were first day right mm-hmm or no, I no, you weren't two. on that day. I thought I thought yeah. you both were together. Mm -hmm. We were together on the last day. Yep. But yes, I was first day, and uh -huh. it was it was really really cool. I had Jeremiah's team first, and um, like a bigger group, there were six of us, and we came out. I was with Gabby and Taylor, and so us rookies arrived a little bit later, and so we came out to Gina, Savannah, and Alexis. You look so good. Oh, thanks. Oh wow, that's so cool. That's I like, haven't seen that yet. That was in Puerto Morales, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That day was that was really fun. What property and and then, Morales? Yes. Um, but you come out to like the veterans who are all together and the sun is rising and they're just, they look stunning, like flawless. And that's like one of those moments where you really do have to mentally check in and be like, okay, this is real and this is happening and this is so, so beautiful. And I want to be on that level. Like that's how DC swim 19 in my head looks like. So just trying to get yourself there and figuring everything out at first is a little bit like overwhelming just because you're like I was trying to think of what I was going to do with my face I, Kelly told me on cameo day you're a smiler oh so goodness. I was like I'm a smiler and then they were like relax your face a little and I was like oh you're right I should probably just try to be a little bit more like sultry and I just didn't <laughs> know like where to even begin and then you're trying to think about your body as well so it's a lot going through your mind um but trusting the photographers and knowing that you look good because they think you look good is the best way to go about it for mm -hmm. sure. You think you had a little bit of a glow up throughout the process? I think by the end of day one, I had, <laughs> by the end of day one, I felt so much more comfortable just mm -hmm. because, you know, the veterans give you tips along the way. You get to like observe a little bit more. I'm very much like watch and then do. So getting to see them do it and then try it myself and then, you know, your teammates and all of the people behind the camera are cheering you on and telling you you look so great. And so you're just like, how am I not like loving every second of this? Mm -hmm. You know, They're, those are fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did your shoot experiences go? It was awesome. And it was really fun going into it my second time because I definitely felt more confident. And it was nice to be able to be there for the rookies because I remember feeling that way. Just, you know, we're not on this team because we're swimsuit models. And so it is foreign to us. And so being able to just explain to them, once you get out there, your nerves go away because exactly what you said, the coaches, they do coach us through it and mm -hmm. tell us little movements here and there. And it's, there's some anxiety le leading up to it for sure. But then once you're out there and you have your friends cheering you on, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a unique experience and something that I would have never done, you know, before being on this team. And so just tried to really enjoy the moment and try to learn from it. And it was, it was so much fun. 
and each team is so different, which mm -hmm. made it really cool too. Do you want to talk about the three different photography teams? Sure. So there's three teams. Jeremy Shelby is our uh, most experienced photographer with, with our project. He's Dallas-based. And then we have Michael Voorhees out of California slash Hawaii. And then we have Jeremiah, Dallas Cowboys' own Jeremiah. Um, and all, all three of their styles are different. Um, Jeremiah, I kind of call my gorilla shooter. He just like, he's click, 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 turn. He just... Gorilla shoots is really fast, but the composition that he comes up with is so unexpected. It's it you don't see what he saw mm -hmm. um, until I'm looking through the film and I'm like, where did he come up with those colorful fence posts? Mm -hmm. That anyway, his comp composition's great. Um, Jeremy Shelby has always delivered beautiful pictures of the girls, and he's great with helping them with their posing and their body language and just getting them real, and com real comfortable on the set so that they can mm -hmm. just feel pretty. And, and the crew that belongs to each of the photographers, too, are part of the chemistry and the dynamic of keeping it uplifted and fun because there is anxiety mm -hmm. on their part. And then Michael... Um, his his pictures, you know, just speak for themselves. They're just they're flawless. They're dynamic. They're saturated with color, and the girls just look beautiful. So it's great once we start doing the editing to have um, three different photographers contribute. The the pictures have enough consistency with the models that it all comes together nicely. But you can see the the different styles, and that I think that makes the project real interesting once it's published. Mm -hmm. Very different styles. I'm I'm like on the edge of my seat to see all of the photos. I know. Me too. All I've seen are the ones that have been posted on social. We had some guest appearances this year in the photos. We have some puppies and some dogs that made a guest appearance. <laughs> really? We Did you have, guys have puppies or dogs? No, no. I missed out. We have iguanas. Oh. Um, we have people, baby. We have lots of guest appearances <laughs> this year. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting you on the spot. Okay. Looking through the two of their photos, how would you describe them? You know, I was just looking at them here and listening to what they say. They have two things very much in common. First of all, their eyes are jump off the camera. Their eyes are their beauty. I mean, they're just they scream off the page and then they also both have beautiful long legs that photograph very well and so you should not they shouldn't overthink it because they actually have two features that are very photogenic and that's beautiful long legs and these eyes that just sparkle for days and i just finished looking at their pictures so i can say that with oh, thank you. thanks kelly with confidence thank you all be very proud of your pictures oh, yay it was really cool to get glimpses of, you know, little pictures, just whether it be on their screen, like as soon as you're done, just to kind of see what it looks like. And first of all, the photographers picking your swimsuits, that is just a whole, you know, process in itself. And I had this one Charmosa suit and I wore it for Michael and I wore it for Jeremy. Is that but the ruffle? It had like all the this burgundy ruffle? stuff. No, no, no. Oh, but I did like the that macrame. one. macrame. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just the way he placed me in the sand with the water in the background, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And it did bring both of them together. But me looking at the suit, I, I honestly wouldn't have ever put myself in that situation. Yeah. I would have just thought like, okay, let's just do a color because there's so much going on anyway. But just to see the photographers like work and their own magic on mm -hmm. you is so, so cool. And then you get to see it come to life a little bit. So I'm excited to see how it all turns out. For I sure. saw you in that suit on the last day. Yeah, your yeah. Last that was shoot. really fun. It was fun. Kind of going off of what Kelly had said too about how they just have such an eye for things. You know, we do a ton of pictures on the beach. That's why we're there. But then we'll also be put in a random spot. For example, I was in between two columns um, in the hotel lobby, mm -hmm. which just looked like two columns to me. But then whenever he put me there and he even let Michael, I was with Michael that day, he'd let me see some of the photos. I was like, wow, that looks amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I wouldn't have ever even thought that that would have been a great photo op. But they're just so creative. It's it's really impressive. I can't wait. Obviously, don't tell us, but were there were there some photos that like just stood out to you during the edit process, and you're like, "Whoa, yes, <sighs> yes." Or you can tell us, or, you can't tell or, us. or we won't. <laughs> do, you, do you have in your mind some standout photos of the two of them? Well, I was just looking at their pictures. That's why I asked you about the burgundy ruffle. Mm -hmm. um, Madeline had this ruffle that's more fabric than one might think of a bikini. It actually has little ruffles on the shoulders, and it's kind of. Betty Boop flirty and it's but it's Cute. beautiful with her eye color. Thank you. Um, yes, the macrame. I don't know what mm -hmm. you call it, but that yeah. blue that was all the fabulous. things going on right here. 
And then Lexi had a sparkly blue. You had the cowboy. You had red, the black, and the lobby. Mm-hmm. What am I missing? I just was looking through these this morning. Am I missing a suit? I, I really loved my Charmosa tie-dye ones, but then I loved that red the Corpo ben- yes. Benito one that you had mentioned. That was like my, I joked, that was my uniform of the trip because every photographer was like, we're going to do the red one. Uh, they all just really liked it in different situations. But yeah, I loved all of my suits. They you were, can't get over a blonde bombshell in red though. You know, thanks, it's such a great look. True. The Very suits true. were all really, really pretty though. We got and the suits, lucky. you were, we covered the fitting, right? Yeah. And when, but on set, I was like, where'd this suit come from? Where'd this suit come from? It didn't even look the same yeah. in the moment in Mexico than it did in our studio when we were oh, just trying them on. I didn't. Totally. They were, they're just brilliantly designed and the color and the beading and the embellishment. It, they looked so much better. They pop on a real beach right. rather than yeah. a face. <laughs> even the face way they, painted one. they did the hair and makeup too, yeah. just made it so beachy and beautiful. And like Christian did my hair with like this coconut oil, I'm pretty sure. And it just like gave it this texture and like, like I just had stepped out of the water and I'm like, this is just, you guys know all the details. They yeah, really they do. do. They, they know what they're doing. They make everyone look amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like, they do. I want full glam all the time. I know. <laughs> all you the got beach full glam. glam last day. Yes. This is a you fun got glam story. Story. Lexi glammed me before ah, the wrap party. Oh, I did. So fun. I she didn't did know my that. hair and makeup. I got my first Texas tease. She you loved did. my Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. Loved my <laughs> big day. She goes, I look like Tracy Turnblad from Hairspray. I was <laughs> like, no, you don't. It looks good. My never had. So Lexi took it from me. She was. My big Texas teaser. Lexi makeup. taught me all the <laughs> tricks and stuff too when I first moved down here. Yeah. She knows that it she's was doing big. Too. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I loved it. I it was, was like, a lot of locker glam. room. Yeah. There's glam tips that start going from locker to locker, uh-huh. girl to girl, yeah. year to year. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. But every Lexi, Lexi could be a member of the glam squad if she wasn't a cheerleader. <laughs> That's all I hire say. me. Hire, <laughs> hire her. Okay. So I got a question because you were like, I've got questions for both of them. <laughs> do they pertain to anything that we've talked about? Not at all. Oh, do you want to hit them with a question then? Sure. Okay, go for it. I'm scared. Are we saving yeah, our? Nervous. We're saving our big news for last, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I was just, I was just kind of thinking about who we we're interviewing, and I was going back through their applications. And Madeline, I have a question for you because um, Madeline went to St. Mary's, mm-hmm. but you cheered on the Notre Dame Palm Squad. Yes, so I was same. trying to kind of clear that up in my head of how you go to St. Mary's and cheer for Notre Dame. Are they, are they, how does that work? So um, St. Mary's is the sister school. So Notre Dame used to be all men and St. Mary's was all women. It was the all women's school. Um, And then Notre Dame went co-ed in the seventies. And so then St. Mary's still stayed all women's, but just the way that um, my Palm Squad was a club sport, so it technically wasn't a sport for Notre Dame. It was technically a club, um, so it was open up to St. Mary's and Holy Cross students. And Holy Cross, it's like this little family of Holy Cross, Notre Dame, and St. Mary's. Um, so I got to audition, and they only had like 25% of the team be from St. Mary's at the time. So I was like one of the lucky three girls on the team who made it from St. Mary's. But yeah, they just were able to open it up to us um, at, over at. St. Mary's, which was really, really cool for me. Because I honestly, like, I went to a really big public high school. And then when I was choosing St. Mary's, I was, it was one of those moments where I was like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to me. But, you know, when you just, like, follow your heart and you're like, this makes sense in here. It doesn't make sense here, but it makes sense here. So I did it. And then it all worked out with me cheering at Notre Dame. And so you had a small school experience. And yes, I got the best of both worlds. For sport sure. experience. Yes. And I noticed too that you had studied, part of your degree was in religion. Yes, religious studies was, was that my reli- minor. world religions? No, just religious studies. Um, but yes, it was world <laughs> religions, yeah. So the Tesma call thing was really cool for me. Exactly. <laughs> I really liked that. It was just, it was more just being curious about like what's out there. And I grew up Catholic, but then went to a Catholic school. So I was kind of already learning all of those things already. So just kind of to open up my mind and see what else is out there and just get in touch with all the different things is what I wanted to minor in religious studies for. So here's my test question. Okay. Do you oh, know Lord. anything about Zoroastrianism? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you? I don't I do now. Me either. I do now because there's this rock star that I'm obsessed with that was Zoroastrian. Oh, from the movie? Freddy? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, well then I'll have <laughs> to study it. Now I'm the asking the religious studies expert. I, know. I don't know. It, I honestly it was, don't. 
It is. It started in India, but I'm. I don't know enough about it. But if you remember in the movie when they kept saying good, good words, good thoughts, good deeds, mm-hmm. that's the premise of the whole religion. So I wondered if you'd ever studied no, that. No, but I will do some studying and then come interview time for auditions. Yes. I'll be sure to bring it up. Okay, okay. Like, and then listen, Kelly. I did my research. <laughs> Zoro what? Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism. I'll also have to do some research. Me too. Part two of this is oh, what oh, famous rock star went to St. Peter's and then also went to St. Mary's in Mumbai. Oh, man. <laughs> I would guess. <laughs> That's also Just a would... safe guess. What is it? Freddie Mercury. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That's a great guess. <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. Yes. Phoning a friend. Yes. Phoning Thank you so much You're for all of your help. He went to St. Peter's <clears throat> boarding school in India, I think when he was age nine or 10, and then spent some time at St. Mary's. But when I read St. Mary's, I'm like, boom, there's two things. I Did could... that make sense, me explaining it? Because yes, sometimes of course. it's really hard for. You know, like unless you're involved in the world, it's like explaining DCC land. Sometimes you're like, makes sense to me. So I'm glad that it made sense me <laughs> explaining it, trying to be from the outside perspective. Yes, it okay. made perfect Good. sense. Good. Perfect sense. Do you want to hit Lexi with one or do we want well, to? Go? Okay. Yeah, Lexi, you said you want to okay. talk about later. All right. Then we'll go to break and we will have Kelly's hard hitting <laughs> questions for Lexi when we return. Okay. Woo. No pressure. <laughs> what do you call a truly great beer? that's brewed with more taste, only 96 calories, and 3.2 carbs, we call it Miller Lite. What are you holding? Miller Lite, hold true. Great beer, great responsibility. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Average analysis, 12 fluid ounces, less than one gram protein, and zero grams fat. Dr. Pepper is the one you crave. But how do you explain that craving? Imagine being shipwrecked on a desert island, alone. Glass-like curls of surf pound the shore with Dr. Pepper-colored waves. Surrounded by desire, but you can't drink it because it's the ocean, fish live in there. The only thing you want is Dr. Pepper, and you can't have it. Now that is a Dr. Pepper craving. Dr. Pepper. The one you crave. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store and learn how to buy one smartphone and get a second one on us. Based on GWS1 score September 2018. Kaboo, Texas is three days, six stages, over 100 artists, including The Killers, Lionel Richie, Leonard Skinner, Ms. Lauren Hill, Kid Rock, Alanis Morissette, Little Big Town, The Eight Vet Brothers, Counting Crows, Pitbull, Sting, The Black Eyed Peas, and the list goes on. Don't miss Kaboo, Texas. Single day and three day passes are on sale now. Visit KAABOOTexas.com to get your passes today. Back to these boots are made for talking. How old he is? When was it? <clears throat> I want to say he's in October. <laughs> he's October or November. Wrong. <laughs> he's a Leo. Because he's got two lions in his logo. So he's a Leo, so it has to be I don't July-ish. Know I don't know. No. June. July no. is Cancer, no. I think. July is September. Cancer. He has two big... Is he Cancer? <laughs> look at the Queen logo. He, it's all Zodiac based. And... Oh, didn't know that. Yes. I'll have to look into it. We are back on These Boots Are Made For Talking. Of course, when Kelly Finglass is present nowadays, the conversation always revolves around Queen and Freddie Mercury. It'll so... change when the Elton John movie comes out. <laughs> I'll I was, come off that. I was actually thinking about this morning. I, I've told you, but it's coming out soon, and we are going together. Mm-hmm. And Palm starts Friday. That looks hilarious. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. I love Diane Keaton so much. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah, I love her. And I want to do a, a movie club with the chillers. I don't think I can pull it off between now and tomorrow night. I didn't think <laughs> enough people would. It, it premieres palms. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It'd be fun. I know. That would be. It would be a lot of fun. Well, before we dive into more non swimsuit related things, we'll talk a little bit more about swimsuit. And then we've got some big things coming up next weekend. Ooh. 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 So we'll dive into that. But let's wrap up swimsuit. 
your second year, where mm-hmm. do you think, and then you can piggyback off of this too, where do you think or how do you think you grew in the two years, especially when it comes to swimsuit? I think just with doing it has helped so much because I think a lot of the unknown is what a lot of the anxiety is around. And so just being able to do it my first year and then seeing the photos come to life and in print just was amazing. And it's even hard to believe like, oh my gosh, that's me or those are my friends, you know, because like I said, we aren't typically swimsuit models. We're on this team to dance. And so being able to see everyone in their element, in that different element, was just really, really cool. And the photos were beautiful last year. And so it got me really excited going into this year. Um, And the weather was just so great. We had so many different shoot opportunities that I know this year is going to be even better than the last. Where did you see her grow in the two years? On print, Lexi definitely looks a lot more confident, a little bit dialed up on the intensity. Yes, hey. ma'am. Um, just more, much more comfortable. And the problem with Lexi's pictures this year are going to be that we have too many. Hey. <laughs> Aww, that's a good thing. Thanks. It's a good thing, but it's also it's it's hard because if when you when you have great many, several great shots, we we only have four calendars and we have a magazine. But let's just say it's four pieces of paper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you've got some great things. It's it's almost heartbreaking to not choose a shot that you're in love with because you've chosen another shot. It it's like it's kind of mind games. And mm-hmm. then once we publish it, I'll always think, oh, should we have should we have printed the one in the red bikini or should right, we have right. done this sunset shot? So it's kind of taxing on the you've mind. You've got a mm-hmm. tough job. Yeah. Because it's yeah. gotta not only work for her, but then everybody else and the format of whatever mm-hmm. calendar it is. The formatting is critical. A square is a whole different ball game in terms of their posing and just, I mean, imagine having to be like in a little square versus laid out on a beach, which mm-hmm. is, which is horizontal. And that's all it is standing up nice and tall. And a lot of what they do is beautiful for the vertical format. Um, so formatting so the big 15 by 15 is, square. Would you say is the hardest yes. calendar to fill. Believe it or not, the squares are hardest to, to compose. Because you basically have to have the girls kind of <clears throat> fold it up a little bit. Or mm-hmm. you have them standing up and we crop above the knees. So then it kills you if they have, like in Lexi's case, beautiful, beautiful long legs in a pose. And we're cutting her off at the knees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was cropping- actually talking with Michael, the editor of the calendar. And that was one thing he said to me literally a couple of days ago that I never thought about. He was talking about how hard it was to fill them. But like the easiest ones are the laying down he's mm-hmm. like you can go through desk pad like that yeah, right wow. but the other ones i was like i never thought about that yeah. and what some people might not know is you guys stay after and pick it mm-hmm. right away right mm-hmm. so they get it done within- well we get it down to we should have picked it but we came back with about at least 50 pictures for each format so that's actually one of the things i was doing this morning and i'm going to be doing it again this afternoon with michael we also get you know, if we're down to the finals, we have other eyeballs look at it just mm-hmm. to see which shots are most appealing. Right. And then we have to compose the calendar. If we have, for example, five, if we have two, five golden sunsets and people are in black bikinis, it, there's no variety. So mm-hmm. then you kind of start looking at, mm-hmm. do we have too much water or too much landscape or too much building right. structure? So... Okay, so tell wow. us where you're at in the process and maybe when fans can accept, expect to see printed versions. We're, we literally are at that point where we're probably, on each format, we're probably about 10 shots over. Wow. So, okay. and it comes down to these, you know, what, what crops best for vertical? Do I have enough? Is there too much of one thing in one format? Sometimes we can go from vertical to square or square back to vertical. And it's it's just a... It's just a puzzle. So that's literally where we are, which is, it's in a good place. But then we're at the point where you start having to say goodbye to some photos that you've loved. Mm -hmm. When's the last day that you have to be like, okay, we got to send them to printer? Um, Next 24 hours. Wow. Wow. So it is crunch crunch time. time. It's crunch. Yep. Oh my God, my heart is like, I'll be praying for you guys. (laughs) (laughs) That's a tough job. It's crunch time. It's good too, though, when you go back through them and you remember, and I've told, I've told y'all this, I tell people every year, the the pictures are beautiful, but it's all those funny stories behind the scenes and mm-hmm. the, the the things that happen to get to the pictures is what sticks with you forever. Mm-hmm. To answer your question, we will send it off to the publisher and we'll hopefully we'll have them back here um, end of August, but most likely we'll have them here September for regular season kickoff. And 
last year you showed the girls during you training them. camp. Mm-hmm. Is that how you've always done it or no? I don't think we've done it that way. We definitely haven't done it in that in that environment. Sometimes we do because we know with the lovely internet now the girls start seeing images online before we've even published it. So we want we want to enjoy the moment to mm-hmm. see their excitement. So we we usually are showing them digital images before the actual printed calendars are back here. Mm-hmm. What was that like last year, seeing yourself in a calendar and then you being a potential member of this team, seeing the calendars come to life? It's been fun. And even my first year before I was in the calendar, they did reveal it in a, mm-hmm. in a fun, special way. You know, last year we thought we were sitting down to Football 101. And then <laughs> the year before, I believe, we just thought we were having some sort of meeting. But um, it, was, it was a surprise both times. So it was really cool. And like I said before, you know, you're not on your friend's shoots. And so being able to see everyone else's photos is really, really exciting, too. Um, and I'm, I just can't wait. I hope that it's during training camp this year so that we can see it before too long. It was really exciting for me as a potential rookie just because you get to see all of the girls that you already look up to in a new way. You're like, this is another element of DCC and why it's so great, you know, because you're not only a cheerleader and a dancer, but you also go out into the community and then you also look beautiful in a swimsuit on the beach. So it's like all of these different elements that play into one. So even just like Lexi's my best friend and she's been that way for since I met her. But, um, you know, to see her in a in a swimsuit on the beach is just something I've never seen of her before so j- it was just a cool experience to see everybody in a new way because you just already are so inspired by them and then it just takes it to that next level of like mm-hmm. okay this is just the coolest thing ever and I just need to be a part of, a part of it yeah speaking of beaches and best friends were either of you on the last day shoot with Michael when we crashed a wedding no, no but we were oh on a beach did you hear together. about that no, no, but that sounds so fun. That was fun. We were shooting the final shot of the day. There were six cheerleaders? Yes, four, with Michael out on the the beach capturing the sunset. And the the hotel, the other great thing about the hotel is they have weddings like almost every day. And I was getting mm-hmm. caught up in the moment. I was sitting kind of way, way off to the side, but I was watching this wedding happening and listening to a singer and then listening to the vows start. And the cheerleaders were way over here, and they were being really be really really quiet and they were trying to quietly shoot sunset well michael there's nothing quiet about Mm -hmm, michael yeah (laughs) so he's like you know yeah he's he's screaming i'm like michael they're getting married so anyway the wedding was going over here and michael's over here shooting the girls and then all of a sudden the wedding you heard a little bit of music and we wrapped and they finished (laughs) and i was like okay come on so we were walking back down the sidewalk and the bride from the wedding said, come here, come here. That's awesome. And the girls were in their Cowboys cover-ups and they went running <laughs> to this wedding. And all of a sudden the entire wedding party whoosh circled around the girls and they took this huge group photo Oh, cool. my with, with these, the cheerleaders that randomly appeared at their wedding. And I was like, this is a fun moment. They actually crashed a wedding by invitation and have a picture with the bride and groom. That's so fun. That's amazing. By request. It was cool. The next calendar needs to be guests of the DCC. So the wedding photo and the dog photos. (laughs) That's a great idea. What you didn't see. Yeah. Everybody that we meet (laughs) on our trips. Calendar. Yeah. Well, that was just a perfect little segue. Right. You like that? Perfect. (laughs) Nice. Perfect little segue because <clears throat> our perfect little soon-to-be bride is Yay! sitting over here. Woo-hoo. The future Mrs. Smith. Mm-hmm. Next. <laughs> Sound effects. Love We've it. We've got big things happening next weekend, and they both involve everybody in this room. Mm-hmm. But we'll start with Lexi because next weekend is your wedding weekend. Yay! I cannot believe that it's finally here. Finally. Where are you at? I feel really good. I'm kind of... A, mix, a bunch of different emotions. I'm, you know, really excited. I've honestly loved wedding planning, so I'm a little sad that the planning part is over, which I think most people don't say that. But um, I'm just really excited to start our lives together. And I think that, you know, hopefully if I make it back, coming home from training camp to my husband is just going to be a whole nother level of comfort. And so I'm really excited. Yay. And you I have mean, a beautiful bridesmaid sitting I next do. to you. I'm I so do. excited. This is my first wedding that I'm in. So the whole experience for me has been so great, not only because it's my first, but because it's Lexi. And she's just such a great, she's so easy to celebrate all the time, you oh, know? Thanks. And we went to um, South Carolina for your bachelorette, which was so great because you got to see a little bit of like, it was Grant's 
parents place that we stayed at so I got to see a little bit more about like you know Grant's life too mm-hmm. so it's been really cool for me yeah and I'm really excited to stand by you and your wedding uh, you're gonna too. look so beautiful prettiest bride ever what are your colors and how many bridesmaids do you have and so how many cheerleaders so I have nine bridesmaids and they're all wearing blush pink and there's two different styles of dress mm-hmm. and then my maid of honor has a dress and I have three uh, one one cheerleader for, that I dance with on the Mavs, and then three cheerleaders, um, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Who who Sa- are they? Savannah, Alexis, and Madeline. Oh fun! Yeah, I'm see so y'all make me honest. I tell that story every year at preliminaries, mm-hmm. and this year Lex will be going on the day before. Yeah, you can. You so can you're say simultaneous. That. You can literally say that. I know. I'm gonna have to have a picture or something pipe in. That would be fun. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. I told you so. Yeah. You did, and it's so crazy that you know I can just vividly remember where I met each of them in the process yeah. and knew that they were going to be special from mm-hmm. the start. So it is, it is crazy. Is this so Savannah's excited. first Texas wedding? I wonder, you know what? That's a great I question. I think she had been to Kelsey's wedding actually, who got married um, a couple months ago, but I think it's her first Texas wedding that she's in. So is your and mom Amy a got nervous wreck married. <sighs> she's, Oh yeah. And Amy's, um, she's been pretty good. I think she knows, you know, the balance of, She's probably stressed, but trying not to stress me out too yeah, much, too. So, yeah, we're really excited. I'm Cheryl offered to let me. She agreed to let me use the studio upstairs tonight. I'm going to practice my dance with my dad. And <gasps> so, oh, my gosh, that's so cute. I know. So we're getting ready. It's just it's all the fun stuff now. I feel like I'm at a good point, so I can just really enjoy this week. Oh, my God, that's, that's so great. cute. Yeah, I'm excited. Big. It'll be so perfect. Yeah, <laughs> now you'll have the perfect speech. For yeah, I know. next weekend because next weekend is biggest weekend for DCC. It is the start of audition. Yes. I cannot believe it. Yay! Crazy. Fastest year ever. Mm-hmm. Seriously. So where are you at right now? We, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been pra- practicing. We've been mapping out our administrative staff, who's doing what, where. Um, getting our judges kind of up to speed, getting all the applications ready, which we still have have time and space if someone spontaneously wants to try out or hasn't had the nerve to do it. Y'all are perfect examples of people that tried out and mm-hmm. were successful the second, second second time, time. through. Yep. Yep. Second time. <clears throat> but um, you know, it's an exciting. It's always exciting for us. It's just like our NFL draft. It's when you get the chance to um, bring in new talent and enhance the team as well as um, celebrate and and lead through our experienced veterans. So it's always exciting. It, it just keeps us all fresh. It, it makes me refresh myself, mm-hmm. our entire staff. It's like a school teacher. You're getting ready for your new classroom. Uh-huh. Okay, so. maybe going through each round <clears throat> quickly, what is one thing that a candidate could do to stand out or that impresses you or that mm-hmm. they should think of going through each round? Well, really, the only round at this point they should mentally get past and just get to is that first round, literally getting out of your car, having the nerve to send in the application, getting out of your car, feeling confident that you're there for a reason, and then just being, I call it being memorable. Um, We're looking for bright showmanship, bright faces, um, someone who's memorable, and all we're really looking for at round one is who we want, who, who makes us want to see them round two Mm -hmm. round two we teach them our choreography that's that's a little bit more difficult then the the skill really has to be there um but we also can see who has the potential and who we think we can develop Mm -hmm. round three is when they meet up with the big bad veterans um and get to show us their talent their solo and some of the girls should be working on that in preparation for that but that's that's always um, such a great showcase of each individual candidate in the process and then after that we're on to training camp with a little panel interviews in between and that's when Mm -hmm. that's when we find out who can do exactly what we're doing right now who can talk and be interesting and be engaging um, for at least an hour Mm -hmm. for at least an hour and we dance on the field too yes which is something that's very different than dancing in a studio and it's just I remember the first night in training camp that we went down onto the field um you were like some people the field is your friend and then some people this is going to be a learning adjustment and in my brain I was like okay but then you get out there and you're just like wow this is so different because the the ground just kind of has a weighing energy on you Mm -hmm. so you really got to amp it up especially because you're going to be dancing for all these people all of a sudden so it's it's cool to see the solo and the interview and the field how it all kind of comes mm-hmm. together for auditions. Yeah. Can before we leave, can Sister Kelly 
come out and give us some inspiring words to everyone that you'll see next weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I I say it there and I'll I say it, excuse me, a lot. And that's one of the things we have hanging in our locker room. And it's one of our 12 promises. And it's to promise yourself to believe that the whole world is on your side as long as you're true to the best that is in you. So we have a lot of women that are coming that are scared or maybe they're not as prepared as they should be or maybe they are. And they've just got to believe that we we want them there. We're looking Mm -hmm. for cheerleaders. And they've got to believe in themselves. Um... Be, and be in that right head space for this audition where the audition is not designed to not select a team. Mm-hmm. We're there to select a team and you just have to believe that in every ounce of, you know, your body is just believe that we're on their side because that might be the difference between someone smiling or having extra energy or just having that extra sparkle, simply coming from an inner confidence mm-hmm. and maybe do the sun ceremony beforehand. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Get on the knees. North, Thanks, South, East, East, West. North, South, East, West. Yeah. Well, thank you. And before we wrap up, I do want to take a minute to thank all of the wonderful people who helped make Calendar come together, especially Dreams by Mujeres and mm-hmm. just the Dreams Company. The resort was amazing. I've heard it from here, from all of us. Mm-hmm. And, of course, all the photog teams, hair, makeup, the swimsuit designers that sent in, our lovely bags. Consuela. 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 Consuela style. Is there anyone I'm missing? Amstar for taking us everywhere. Our friends at Amstar for getting us around safely. Thank you, got it. It takes a village, but it it was amazing. And we will obviously let you know when calendars and magazine are going to be on sale. And next weekend, we hope to see all your shining faces out there. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, best of luck to everybody. Earn your spot on this amazing team. Until then, thank you for tuning in to These Boots Are Made For Talking. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?